Hello, hello. Welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's 11, 11 a.m. Wow. How auspicious. Well, it's Wednesday, January 31st. Damn, I cannot believe that we are right on the doorstep of February already. It always seems like the month of January just drags ass. <laughs> I have rescheduled one of my one of my many birthday dinners twice now. Once due to illness in my household, not myself, but my household. Um, actually, wait a minute. No, it was the other party that was sick. And then I had sickness in my household. And then the other party got sick again. Or no, I am so sorry. See, this is like January. <laughs> seems like it's lasting for like six months um and the other party got, was still sick never got better the reason why I thought she was sick again is because I didn't realize that she never got better because this one fellow Capricorn we were going to celebrate our birthdays together she just keeps on going you know, that's us Capricorns. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. But I told her, I said, you know, you're not getting better because you're not letting yourself rest. And how can you when you have three or four jobs? Oh. Anyway, she works hard for her money. And that's why... We both agreed we have a birthday month because I think we sh we rescheduled due to the weather. Yeah, well we we hang out often, so the first rescheduling could not might not have been our birthday celebration, but it was due to sickness, and then it was weather, and then it was sickness again. So I said, "Hey." Let's just wait for spring. <laughs> I just wish I could hibernate, but here I am. And the light is returning. We are coming up on in bulk weekend or St. Bridget's Day, however you may celebrate. I know um, there is a fire festival bonfire nearby and I thought I would go to that. Thought it was interesting. I'm like, oh, I wonder, you know, do these people know that they're celebrating a pagan thing? Is it pagan or is it, you know, that we're just bored and we want to celebrate the light, the, the, the days getting lighter and the nights getting shorter? It's a cool thing, I think. Hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I am not, I mean, I don't celebrate or follow the holidays, although I'm aware of them, the festivals, uh, you know, in pagan, it, in pagan culture and tradition, and in many, uh, many others, but they don't acknowledge it, or it's not, you know, obvious, it's, it's uh, the traditions are long lost, but um, following the seasons and celebrations are marking certain turning points in the seasons, such as in bulk, which is a festival of the, you know, the time in between the winter solstice and the spring equinox so just acknowledging the shift of the seasons and helping us to make it through the winter god damn 
I fucking hate winter. I hate that I was born in winter, but it is what it is. Nothing is easy for a Capricorn. Anyway, I thought I would pop on here. I'm not live on Twitter this time. Last time for the weekly astrology, which was posted on Monday. I did it live on Twitter and uh, then uploaded the recording onto YouTube. So if you are new to my channel, um, I am starting to do broadcasts on Twitter X. So go over there if you're on there, if you're not on there. I know a lot of people are not on there. Did you know you can see what's on Twitter without be having a Twitter account? It's called knitter.it. Fun fact. So uh, you can catch some live broadcasts over there in the future. If you follow, hit the bell to subscribe and you'll get notifications. Otherwise, I am on YouTube every week, usually posting that video around Sunday or Monday for the weekly astrology. And then here and there, showing up uh, for weekly, not weekly, but, you know, daily reports, talking about asteroids and stars and other important events and just things that I am checking out that I want to let you guys know about um so you can yeah follow my youtube channel hit the bell again subscribe blah 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 please like the video and comment ask questions if you like I appreciate your support you know I do have a core handful of very very loyal subscribers, people that I really appreciate. And, you know, I'm on Facebook, but I, I have a page. I don't even know why I bother because it just doesn't get any traction, right? Unless you like pay for, you know, boosting it. And fuck that, I'm not going to pay. Because it's not, you know, it just doesn't... Facebook doesn't give back to me. I'm sorry. And most of the people on Facebook are, you know, people that I know, IRL, and they're not necessarily interested in astrology. And the people that I think would be interested are there doing their own thing. And I don't get a lot of cross-pollination, except for um, Dave and Russ from beyond the strange i appreciate you guys we've become like extended family see that's what i like i appreciate when podcasters support other podcasters you know we go on one another's shows we promote um and support it's like a family i think that that is wonderful and i intend to have a few people this year already that I have in mind to have on my show because I like doing interviews too. So I'll be mixing it up this year. And if you have any suggestions of people you think that I should have on my show, you know what? What I love is people who are interested in or involved in. Things that are peripheral to what I do, but I, where I could bring the astrological element, you know, for instance, the paranormal, esoteric subjects, whatever it is, um, true crime, that kind of thing. Uh, so I have plans to be sort of a bridge or to give, you know, the astrological backup. Because there's a lot of people that I listen to, Cliff High being one of them, who I I know are very accurate at forecasting, and I don't say predicting, but forecasting the likelihood of certain events. 
they're like, well, we don't know when that's going to happen. And I'm like, <laughs> I do. Or I could, you know, I could pretty much hazard a guess on that, uh, t on the timing. So, in other words, to add my input to the discussion because now that we're in with um now that we're in with pluto in aquarius and you know that the that the sun and pluto both went into aquarius now we have pluto and aquarius until the fall when it starts to retrograde sometime in the fall it will go back into capricorn for a slight bit but um, I've been tracking some of the Pluto in Aquarius vibes. And one thing that I have seen, one of the things, is um, Elon announcing that the very first human Neuralink um, transplant has been successful. Now, that is... Pluto in Aquarius territory, right? Um, Pluto is going to bring us a lot of technological advancement. The other thing that I was tracking was DNA, and we're going to talk about that today. Asteroid DNA, which has been hovering around 9 to 10 degrees of Libra, it's about to go retrograde, I believe, on the 2nd of February. And as it goes retrograde, it is going to move into a trine aspect, an air trine from Libra to Aquarius um, by April. So let's say if it goes retrograde February 2nd by April 2nd, it's going to be trying to Pluto. And I was just looking at that chart the other day and thinking, wow, this is really interesting. Because um, when I was looking at how Looking at the asteroid DNA, slowing down to go retrograde. We know that planets and bodies, when they when they start to change direction, that's a very powerful time. We need to look at what's going on. And um, I went on Twitter and I searched DNA. And I came up with a very interesting story, which actually dates back to 2021, but I had not heard it. Um, the Senator, uh, what's her name? Omar Ilion, I think is her last name. Anyway, you probably know who I'm talking about, but um, turns out that she married her brother. But for the papers, you know, not in a creepy way. Uh, now, it's not, it didn't go anywhere because I guess the statute of limitations had run out. But it got me to thinking, because here's the deal. <laughs> Even though I saw that now, it's valid. Because in horary astrology, when you pull up the chart of the moment, it's what you're looking at. So it's what I was looking at at that time with the asteroid DNA, which is now squaring Venus in Capricorn. And she's not somebody that I follow. I mean, I, or that I watch, you know, but I'm aware of her. And I understand like what her deal is. Um, but I, saw after that doing a little bit more poking around that she there's you know stuff people are saying about her uh, she's having other issues so 
just interesting how that came up because Venus is in Capricorn right now. And yesterday it was around eight degrees of Capricorn making a square, which is a 90 degree angle from Capricorn to Libra squaring asteroid DNA, just as DNA is going to go retrograde. So that means that for the next couple of months, it should be very interesting um, in terms of legal issues, because so I retweeted what I found on Omar, even though it's not current, it's still valid. It doesn't have to be her situation. Her situation was was a her situation was a an example of what we need to be looking at. Um, so the way I looked at it was Venus in Capricorn, a woman in government, Capricorn, a woman uh, in a position of power and authority. And the square to DNA is coming from Libra. So Libra is partnership. She married a brother. And uh, Li Libra is associated with law and justice. So it was challenging the legality of her marriage. But there's, again nothing can be done about it now technically however it opens up a can of worms and that leads me to my next um my next discovery or something that it led my attention to which is um sorry uh yeah asteroids in Aries, which Aries is opposite to DNA, right? And it would have been opposite these, well, not really, but they're kind of opposite one another in sort of a reverse and slow motion way. <laughs> um, but I'm going to try to break it down for you in in a way that it makes sense. So let's say we've got, on the one hand, we've got DNA, which is about to go retrograde in Libra, which means it's stopping and it's saying, hold on a minute, we need to go back and check some things out because we're getting information that, mm, now, in light of that information, we're looking, we have to look at some things from the past and address them because we have new information. So around January 20 to 21st, we did have asteroids Pandora and Clotho in Aries at 10 degrees, that was their conjunction. And they've been hanging out together, moving forward. And now they're at, let's see, um, around 15, 16 degrees of Aries, but their exact conjunction appears to be around the 20 to 20, 20th to the 21st. So somewhere around there, now, Pandora and Clotho in Aries were making a square to Mercury in Capricorn around 9 to 10 degrees. Interesting, because that's where Venus is now. And where they were then is opposite the point where DNA is stationing to go retrograde. So I hope you understand that it is not really about this Omar lady, but it is. So whatever is going on around her is opening up Pandora's box. So let's talk about those asteroids. 
being that they're in Aries, you know, Aries is the initiator, the first sign of the Zodiac, sort of like who shot first. Um, and it's, um, sorry, I'm just thinking about something too. You know, I mean, I said going back to January 20th, but even go back to the 17th and 18th, we would have had Mars squaring those asteroids. And Mars in Capricorn, and that's very warlike. I mean, Mars is very strong in Capricorn, right? It's an it's a sign of exaltation for Mars. And it's it's ruthless and kind of cold and cutting. And I mean, it'll do what it whatever it has to do to get to the top, right? So anyway, it just feels like that was sort of the a time period when there would have been like a shot across the bow. Like you went there so we're gonna go there because then moving forward we see mercury and mars squaring chiron which is you know an insult a wound something that causes pain right um and Capricorn's all about reputation. So there's a lot of vengeful energy here. Venus would have been in the degrees of the last few degrees of Sagittarius. So hitting at people's relationships, females attacking female, females attacking females and females being attacked losing their reputation, Fanny Willis. Um, and those degrees in Sagittarius are the degrees of the stinger of the scorpion. So poison, um, you know, literal and figurative. And it's a very like revenge. Absolutely. Trying to bring people down. Um, yeah, so then Mars and Mercury after that squared the nodes of fate. So it's like a tipping point where like, oh man, there's no turning back. You've crossed a line. Somebody crossed a line. Somebody crossed the border. And that's it. Like this time period was the tipping point. The 26th, 27th, Mars and Mercury like a dec declaration of intention, aggression, you know, and scoring the nodes of fate. So you can look at this time period as this is when the real, sh like really when the shit storm started, when we're in April. Okay, end of March into April, when we get into Aries season, when we get past the Neptune and Pisces, fog and delusion and lies. Uh, but this is where it all started, starts. So, you know, we're kind of like fast forwarding. This is what is great about astrology. We can fast forward to see when, you know, when it started, what, what was the instigation? So now, you know, we had, since we had Mercury and Mars squaring um, Pandora, opening up the Pandora's box, and Clotho. Clotho is one of the four fates. So Let's talk about Clotho for a second. Now, of the three fates, Clotho is the one responsible for weaving. 
So if you don't know, the three fates in mythology are Clotho, Lachesis, and Atropos. It's beginning, middle, and end in that order. So Clotho weaves, spinning, she is the one who spins and weaves the story or you know the elements of a life it is this it is the beginning of the quote life of the thing so this is when it all started it starts with clotho weaving the elements um the beginning the conditions in the chart it indicates the conditions of the life at the very start it indicates you know the quality of time when the thing started i mean we can even go back to conception with this and um so it shows us the beginning and it also talks about having or not having what it takes to succeed. So whatever the intention or um, should we say the goal being set at this time, being that the ruler of Clotho and Pandora are is, you know, they're in Aries, so the ruler is Mars, and Mars is strong in Capricorn. I would say that it's more having what it takes to succeed. But we can look at this in terms of where Chiron is. Chiron is, you know, the e e egotistical wounding, the identity, the individual being able to take action and Mars being in Capricorn is, you know, being able to take the initiative and take authority, be the authority. Um, so in terms of looking at whether you have or don't have the right stuff, you would probably want to look at you know the um whatever the um ego motivations for success what is the underlying you know what is the motive why do you want why are you opening up this pandora's box and it's how you open it like you know if you're looking to set a goal to reach by spring, by Aries season, it matters what you do and how you go about it now. Because Mercury and Mars in Capricorn are requiring us to be in integrity, to make a commitment, to be, you know, loyal, steadfast, to be accountable. Um, to be our own authority. So think about that. And also those launching attacks right now could be the, I mean, it can back backfire on them. If they are not in, in, in integrity and they're not innocent, the only the only quote attacks that are going to really succeed and follow through to the next phase and let's not even say attacks let's just say initiation instigation um you know if you are bringing charges against someone you better be blameless so that's Mercury and Mars in Capricorn. People in glass houses should not throw stones. So things to think about, but this is a very interesting 
thing as it relates to DNA because um, we there are um, the, you know there's a lot of cases that rest on DNA and DNA over the next you know until between now and when DNA makes a trine to Pluto in Aquarius and Pluto is you know investigations that's police investigations because Pluto rules Scorpio and I also think that because we are going to have new and better technology regarding DNA across the board. So whether it's healing DNA, detecting DNA that causes um, illness, like identifying uh, genetic markers, um, but DNA, the uses of DNA are going to expand with Pluto in Aquarius and forensic investigations and all of that. So, um, you know, there will be challenges to it. The envelope will be pushed for sure. Like where, what are the boundaries of it? Um, the legalities, that kind of thing. But Interestingly, I think that um, one of the things that I thought about is, so if we have certain technology, let's say genetic therapy, and the, I don't know how this would be done, but I mean, there are patents for this technology, but what happens when that technology becomes part of, you know, the human genome and someone else owns that technology? Wouldn't they sort of like, wouldn't you become like their property? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know if this has been... I'm sure it's been talked about. I haven't heard it, but I remember hearing about a certain remedy. Um, and the illness, the ill, both the illness and the remedy having patents attached to it. Now, what does that tell you? If those things have patents and those things become part of your Organic matter, the inorganic matter becoming part of the organic matter. And if they own the inorganic and the inorganic becomes intertwined with the organic, wouldn't they own the whole thing? Inquiring minds want to know. So those are some of the things that I've been thinking about with Pluto and Aquarius, and then looking at DNA. DNA, stationing to go retrograde. We're going to start reviewing some things and looking at the legalities because DNA is in Libra. Libra, scales of justice, etc. But there's a deeper level to that because I am telling you, talking to you about the zodiac sign of Libra. Yet there are stars in the first 10 degrees of Libra that are not in, I mean, they are, they're not, they're in the, well, they're in the zodiac sign, but the stars have correlations to the um, constellations that they are located in. And some of those are in Virgo. And hmm, I'm going to have to go back and look. But if you want to know about the exoteric versus the esoteric, the external versus the hidden side of how to read the astrology chart, 
this is what I'm trying to point out here, but I'm not going to go into it today. I'm going to tell you what's on the surface, what is for mass consumption, perhaps another time I'll go into what is going on behind the scenes. But we can look at the asteroid DNA square to Venus and Capricorn. Venus is money, financial. So let's look at the financial side of Venus in Capricorn. Capricorn being business, right? And Venus in Capricorn, I would look at um, property rights and what the business owns or has invested in, squaring to DNA. I mean, you tell me. You tell me what that means. Anyway, in terms of personal astrology, um, we can look at, well, we, I mean, Omar. Oh, my God, Omar. So the DNA proved that she was married to her brother, Venus's relationships, um, Capricorn familial Capricorn and cancer being the axis of the family of mother and father. So, and because it was really for business, not for romance. Well, we don't know, but allegedly, <laughs> uh, and DNA being the the relationship between the two. So that is very interesting. Now, yeah, statute of limitations ran out on that in terms of that being an illegal marriage, but I will bet you because she's saying other things or other people are pissed off at her for other reasons other than this. And, um, you know, that might come up again and they find that it was there was other stuff going on or a different way to charge her a different, you know, law or statute. So that could be very interesting, but I just think that, um, in terms of females and DNA, I mean, this could be anything. It could be, you know, paternity tests and people and who they're related to, there has been a lot going on over the past month, going back to mid-January when Venus, Ceres, and Asteroid Child made a square to Juno in Virgo. I saw a lot of wife versus, you know, the lover um, in terms of finances um what do you call it it came up a lot about people somebody specifically but we're not going to go into that um putting their money in the in the wife's name in the child's name you know the lover's name whoever whatever setting up you know a trust all of that kind of thing so and going after the wives of people who have committed crimes. I mean, obviously, that's the first thing they do. They try to see if the wife will turn against the husband and vice versa um, because they'll threaten to charge charge them as an accessory if they don't cooperate. So interesting. A bunch of things that were going on with that. At the end of January, I have talked about asteroid Orcus the one who, the judge who punishes Oathbreakers being hanging out in the middle of Virgo for quite some time and being involved back in the fall with the Mercury retrograde. Very, very interesting. And now Juno conjuncted um, 
a fetus and orcas and now she went past them and stopped to go retrograde so best believe there are people who were married are married or were married to certain people who are being investigated ex-wives um deceased ex-wives or ex-partners crap like that going on it's very interesting um so or yeah i mean juno going over a fetus and orcas could be you know the partner it doesn't have to be a wife it doesn't have to be a legal marriage it's just that someone can be reevaluating the person that they've chosen to align themselves with and then finding out that probably when Juno conjuncts a fetus in Virgo, they find out that they have been involved with someone who has criminal involvement because a fetus is guilty by association. It has to do with criminal networks and right now mars and mercury are trining a fetus and orcas from capricorn squaring the nodes so i mean for somebody this could be a heads up that holy crap right now i see it what this person has been involved in and this is your chance to get out of it Will you heed the warnings? But it does tell me that there is an investigation going on and that law enforcement could be getting ready to make arrests. Now, I know people, the mind goes to mass arrests. Eh, I don't really see that happening. Although um, you might get something that makes you happy to hear about somebody getting arrested or investigated. We have heard rumors about he diddy and interesting. Now, here's what I do think. I do think because of rumors that I've heard, my opinion is that he is under investigation. You know who I'm talking about, right? Diddy, diddy, dunda. And so when the heat was really on him, Pluto was at the last degrees of Capricorn. And the did the Diddy's um, Mars, I believe, is at the last degrees of Capricorn. So his Mars and Capricorn would be um, his involvement probably with figures that are more influential than him or him swinging his weight around. That's all his like business dealings, his sex life, biz, you know, business and sex all intertwined there. And with Pluto on top of it with the sun I would say that that sounds like there's an investigation there and or he was definitely of a mindset of can I take what how much more can I take and do I want to stick around I mean that is heavy paranoia <laughs> definitely paranoid under a lot of pressure, scrutiny, and it really did look like an investigation to me. So now that Pluto is and the sun have moved on, the sun is going to square his sun and whatever else he's got in Scorpio. I don't have this chart in front of me. I know he's a Scorpio. Um... So, yeah, it really does feel that way. So if he, my guess is if he's going to get arrested, it'll be when Mercury 
February 4th, Mercury would be on that spot where Pluto was on his Mars, February 4th, and then Mercury goes into Aquarius and hits Pluto on the 5th. Shortly after that, Mars does the same thing. And we're going to talk about this too because it's a one, two, three punch. And I'm going to let you know the dates of that. So Mars goes into Aquarius and conjuncts Pluto, which is violence, you know, death, and like an abrupt ending to something on the 13th. So, um, it could be an announcement on the 5th. I always thought he was going to like leave the country or disappear. I don't know. So the 5th, Mercury, Pluto. And then the 13th, Mars, Pluto. Mercury, Pluto, Mercury's the mind, news, communication, that kind of thing, announcements about Pluto, crime, taboo subjects, sex, um, death, right? Somebody dying. The 13th. And then Venus. I should be square sharing my screen, but I'm not I'm being a stingy bitch today. Um, and then the 16th, the 5th, the 13th, and the 16th. I'm going to write that down in my notes because I want to look at the numerology too. 2, 13, 2, 16. So, now that we're into February, February numerology for the month is a one month, right? Um, January was a nine month because 2024 20, is an eight year. So the year plus the month, that tells you the numerology of the month. And then we have the numerology of the day. So January was a month about endings, culmination, climax. February is a one month. This is the beginning of something new. So take the one and add it to the day, the date. So February 5th is a six day. February 13th is a five day. And February 16th is an eight. So if you've listened to my podcast before, I do like to point out the three, six, and nine days. Because to me, um, I watch the way the energy builds from the one to the nine day. So it's just sort of a hack for me to take the three day, the six day, and the nine day to tell either tell me what the way the energy is building so that I can comfortably assume what the next step will be or another way that you can use this is to take action on those days to take advantage of the energy of those days so if you are you know trying to reach a goal build something um 
that kind of thing. Whatever you're doing, whether it's a ritual, a meditation, a symbolic action, which is what a ritual is, really. Um, I like those days. So that is one of the things that I do talk a lot about. And so we've got, on the fifth, we've got Mercury conjunct Pluto. So this would be the announcement, the intention. And then on the 13th, we have Mars conjunct Pluto, the action. And Pluto, you know, Pluto is transformation. Yes, it's death. Um, it can be. Uh, it, it's indicating to us what is passing away and what is coming in its place. And also, it's about power. It's facing fears. It's understanding power dynamics, power struggles, and how to work with that. So If we can understand what is trying to transform us, what is transforming and what is coming up from our subconscious, that's a lot of Pluto stuff too. It is, you know, shadow work. Stuff will be coming up at this time if you are having a transit to these degrees around the first degree of, let's say, Aquarius, Libra, um, Horus, Leo. I would say those most intensely, but also for those of us who have planets at the last degrees of Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, Libra, because it's like a th passing over a threshold or um, like watching things transform, um, watching the old thing pass away. And like, you know, Pluto transits are like that uh, demolition. It's like, a bulldozer moving slowly through the zodiac destroying everything in its path you have to understand what it is destroying so that you can work with that but also understand what's on the other side of the transformation and you know pluto and aquarius i'm sorry pluto and scorpio deal with death but death is a transformation. What's on the other side? I imagine we'll be talking a lot about that, especially with Pluto in Aquarius now. And Aquarius is, Aquarius likes to deal with unusual topics. I think I should share my screen. What do you think? I'm going to do that. <sighs> Hang on. What I have right now on the screen, let's take a second just to talk about this screensaver here, the background. This is a an artwork, piece of artwork from Urania's Mirror, which was from the 1800s. And it depicted the characters, you know, of the constellations. It's very beautiful, I think. And this is Aquila. And the abduction of Ganymedes. So Aquila is depicted as an eagle. Uh, because I want to point this out because 
in the constellation, the zodiac, sorry, of Aquarius, many of those stars are in the constellation of Aquila, as well as the constellation of Aquarius. And also Del Delphinus is in there, Aquilus. So Aquila being the eagle that is is Zeus, but is also the sort of uh, sort of the kind of the right hand of Zeus. He goes and he he retrieves the thunderbolts for Zeus. So it there it there's a mil militaristic theme going on here, but also Aquila was sent out to bring back for Zeus the um to scout out and look for the most beautiful boy which turned out to be Ganymedes Ganymedes is the water bearer of Aquarius so there's a lot of things I've talked about with this um constellation that I think are very important some of those stars lie in the last decan of Capricorn and going into the cons the zodiac sign of Aquarius and what have we been dealing with um deep ties to the um well if you could say Aquila in a way I look at Aquila the eagle as a talent scout because what does the eagle got do it flies high it surveys the land it's scouting things out what was he looking for the most beautiful boy to be the cupbearer to zeus you kind of get what um why i associate it sort of with talent scouts and people who are tasked with looking for a certain type of person, including children. Um, and what have we been dealing with, right? With Pluto in the last few degrees of Capricorn, we've been dealing with that connection in terms of our government. And people and lead in power leaders. Now we're getting into Pluto in Aquarius. We're getting deeper into it. And I've looked at people's charts that were implicated in such things. And I see a lot of Capricorn and Aquarius placements. So that to me says that this is valid in terms of the association of Aquarius and Aquila at placements and degrees, certain degrees in those zodiac signs with her people who are involved, who have experienced, who have connections to, and not always the guilty parties. So, and you know, it's not everybody. I have to give that disclaimer, you know, don't look at it and say, oh my God, I have such and such at 11 degrees of Aquarius. I'm not into that stuff. I don't know anybody who's into that stuff. Well, great. That's wonderful. <laughs> you have to look at the whole chart. First of all, um, there's a lot of things that I would look at, but um, you don't necessarily know that you're not connected to somebody who has been involved, you know, as a victim or a perpetrator. You don't know that. Or you don't know that it doesn't go generations back, right? But um, you have. we have to look at the whole chart is my point. So don't go right running to your chart and saying, you know, oh my God, whatever. So anyway, but my point is now that Pluto is in Aquarius. It's in the constellation of Aquila, 
we are going to see shit storms. Shit storms. Um, what I talked about earlier when I mentioned that the asteroid DNA is in retrograde and by the beginning of April, it will make that trine to Pluto in Aquarius. I would think that DNA would become a big factor in such investigations, shall we say. I think it's going to help connect the dots. I think there's going to be more technology. Um, we should definitely look at what's going on on February 5th. Sorry, I'm going to share my screen now. God. Um, all right, so this is February 5th. And we've got Mercury and Pluto. So at the very least, I don't know about you guys, but I really did feel Pluto going into Aquarius. Maybe that's because Pluto is now sextiling my Venus. So that could be very interesting. I'm really looking forward to that, actually. I've already been, like, leaning into that and, like, sort of giving it the side eye. <laughs> um, yeah. But I felt, my point is, I felt, I felt something change. I watched, observed had conversations with other people. I know that the vibe has changed. So that says to me what we are looking forward to by the 5th, because everything before that, there were no aspects to Pluto except from the moon. And in my weekly podcast, I was talking about if you want to know what's coming up for you with Pluto and Aquarius these are the days when the moon will be making an aspect to Pluto. Watch for those days. And that will give you your clue of what's going on. Now, I know what's coming for me, actually. Uh, I've been looking at this for a long time. Um, so, you know, but um, my feeling is we will get those clues on an emotional, intuitive level before the fifth, where we'll feel like, ah, something's changing. And at the very least, maybe it's like, you know, ah, we're like halfway through the winter or almost to the spring, where things are starting to improve. It feels like they are. It feels like they are. But, I mean, is is it an improvement because it's just, it's a change? It's something different and, you know, <laughs> you know, different shit, is different shit, different day. I don't know. But we do feel, I do feel it. Whatever. Maybe you don't. But, um. There's a change in the air since Pluto has gone into Aquarius. Undeniable. Um, and then on the 5th, we have Pluto conjunct Mercury. So if Pluto going into Aquarius is the transformation of the collective or groups and networks of people, let's say, because it's Aquarius. 
now Pluto is felt on a very deep, slow wavelength. So it's not necessarily something that unless you're dialed into it, unless you like really are paying attention and you're like, ooh, what was that? It was a disturbance in the force. Or, you know, starting to feel your power again. Like, I don't know, Pluto and Capricorn has been like fucking awful. <laughs> Sorry, I lived through it for the past 20 years. It's been brutal. But you know, this is what Aquarius now has to look forward to. Maybe it won't be so bad for you guys. <laughs> We're both Capri uh, Saturn ruled signs, Capricorn and Aquarius. It just figures differently, but at least you guys have Uranus, and Uranus is kind of cool because it's new, it's exciting. I like it anyway. Anyway, so the fifth, we're going to have Mercury conjunct Pluto. Mercury's the mind. Anything having to do with communication, transportation, maybe even lower education because it rules Gemini. It does rule uh, Virgo also. So there is that sort of health and service and work aspect to it. Um, but it definitely is seeking the depths of information and very powerful communication or propaganda because Pluto is manipulation and power and control. So trying to control information, communications, especially those of a technological nature in Aquarius, let's really pay attention to what's going on on the fifth. So if the fifth is the sixth day, stay with me here. The second would be the third day. Let's see if there's anything going on that we can, that can give us a clue. The moon will be in Scorpio, which is Pluto's sign of rulership. It will be opposite to Jupiter in Taurus, which is ruled by Venus in Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn in Pisces, which is ruled by Neptune in Pisces, which is sextiling Mercury. Hmm. Um, I think on the second, being the third day, if that's the sort of day that we want to look at of the initiation of this, I look at everything. I look at everything in the public eye as being sus and part of a ritual or staged and intentional. I think we are talking about a death here and maybe being prepared for a something to do with a female. So a changing of the guard or a passing away a stepping down maybe because Venus will square Chiron on the fifth. So it could be that there's, all right, you know that there's a lot of things going on at once and Whatever is happening is connected to the, if there's a death of a female at this time on the second, which is the three day, it starts with this issue 
passing away or a difficulty with a female, the moon is in Scorpio and it is waning. The moon in Scorpio, moon is female. It does sextile to Venus, female again. And this would be a female in a position of power and government. Um, opposing Jupiter. Hmm. So to me, it would be about money and finances. The root of it seems to be financial legacies, perhaps. Uh, oh, getting someone's affairs in order, that could be. And Mercury, Neptune, I think is creating sort of a glamour spell to cover up what is really going on. Like there is the public announcement and information, family, family business, family legacy, and the need to protect and keep a barrier around this woman because this also goes back to when venus sextiled saturn and trying to jupiter i think i know who i'm talking about but um i didn't want to make it because i don't have their chart but i do I have heard about what's going on with this person and I didn't want to make it into like a celebrity astrology thing. But anyway, this is sort of what I'm being drawn to. Um, the events leading up to perhaps an announcement on the 5th. And I think that someone passes. It's possible that they passed already. And this is the story we're being given. Um, we'll wait and see what happens. I don't even want to say who it is because because I don't have their chart in front of me. But uh. Yeah, so, um, but it's not, I didn't want to make it all about that, but that's where my brain went. Let's just go back to Pluto being conjuncted by Mercury. We're getting some information about a transformation, about a death, about power, about power shift, power dynamics on the 5th. And then on the 13th, we have... Mars doing the same thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. 13th. Um. It is interesting because if you notice that on the 5th, check it out, Mercury, Pluto, we have the sun at 16 degrees, sextiling to Chiron. There is some sort of pain wounding the collective maybe even bringing up old memories from the past. We have the waning moon. It's releasing some kind of truth from the past, whatever. Sextiling to the sun, making a trine to the north node and Chiron. There is something coming out regarding that. 
the past and it's coming out, it's trickling out is my point over February with these particular conjunctions to Pluto. First Mercury, the news, then Mars, Pluto, you know, war, death, destruction, but like powerful action, symbolic action. And then Venus. So it's information, words, communication, then action, then Venus, relationships and money and reputation. So you can look at it that way. And um, interesting because the 13, the 13th is going to be a five day. Five days indicate chaos and confusion, competition, and Mars Pluto would fall in that category. So that's interesting. But on the 13th, we have uh, Venus will be in the same position that Mercury was and then Mars was and let's see Mercury's at 13, 14 of Aquarius. I mean we're really getting into those degrees that I have looked at in Aquarius and Aquila that relate to the um the trade of persons and especially young persons so this should be very interesting to watch now on the 13th the moon Chiron and the North Node are all conjunct in Aries, which is where we find Lachesis, which is one of the fates, and the North Node. Now, we talked about Clotho. Clotho will be there. Pandora will be there around about that time. Right now, they're around 15 degrees. By then, I think they will be, um, by the 12th, they should be around, let's see, Mars will, ooh, hang on, Mars will be still in Capricorn. Okay, so the 12th, Mars, 29 degrees of Capricorn. Guess whose Mars is there? Da, 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 da. Um, okay, so Mars will square to Lachesis, one of the fates. Lachesis is the one who assigns the length, the length or the lifespan of the thing, of the fate. Can be an interruption in a sequence indicates destiny and intervention. Beep, beep, beep. So, yeah, Lachesis was, has been hanging out with the North Node for a while. The North Node has moved off of it. It's now at Chiron, the wound. Um, and Pandora, the North Node, and Chiron, Pandora will be at 19 degrees. Clotho will have moved up to 21. This is all very, very faded stuff going on. Either I see possibly a woman going down for something or a woman coming forward to stop something because it's Venus also that is going to be 
involved in these degrees? Um, hmm. What else do we have here? All right, let's just will be around 27 of Aries, square to Mars. So it's also, you know, it's all the crap that we've been seeing in regard to people, influential people, government, whatever, whatever, positions of power, people abusing their power. The 12th. Okay, so Atropos is the third fate. Atropos cuts the cord. So let's look at that for a second. Go back. On the fourth and the fifth, leading up to the fourth and the fifth. Okay, here, 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 here. Here's my missing piece of, piece of the puzzle. I said around the second, that will be the three day. It's what's going on around that time that will be important. But now I can tell you why. Because at 13 degrees of Taurus, we have Atropos, the third fate, which cuts the cords indicates endings is considered inflexible or having the quality of inflexibility like fate that's it like it's set in stone it's not negotiable um also dealing with death cutting the cord you know death and endings inevitability so you see how the fates are working now? One begins the thing. One decides how long we're going to see this thing, <laughs> the span of its life, which I think we're seeing with the squares to Lachesis. That's telling us Lachesis at the end of Aries squaring to the planets that transit it from Capricorn that we are seeing the end of something on the microcosm, but it re represents the beginning of the end of a thing in the mic macrocosm, if that makes sense. So Atropos in Taurus on the second will be opposed by the moon in Scorpio. So here in Scorpio, we have the, the death, we have the revealing of, because this will be the last quarter square this week. This is at the end of the week, my God. <laughs> I'm looking at this thinking like, God, this like feels like it's happening right now. But no, it's happening this week. But I did talk about it on the weekly. That's why. Because it's the last quarter square. Last quarter square of the moon to the sun. It is the last turning point in the phase of the lunar cycle. In a similar way that we have the cross cross quarter times you know in bulk february being the cross quarter like the what do you call it the the marking the last quarter of of the year in the seasonal cycle before spring starts so we're seeing a big reveal here, I think, with the sun in Aquarius square to the moon in in um, Scorpio, opposite Atropos, which is cutting cords, bringing endings, in indicating inflexibility, 
in terms of, let's say we have some bad behavior going on, you know, bad habits, whatever. And you've been given indications time after time by the negative results or karma of cause and effect to say, you know, if you keep going down that path, it's not going to be good. And for somebody here, we're turning a corner to say, you know, if you, the negative reaction will come from, or the inevitable effect of atropos of the inflexibility of not wanting to change, then we have the inevitability of the cutting of the cord, the ending, you'll be cut off from the family, you'll be cut off from life, you'll be let go of from the job or or whatever. Or, you know, we're going to leak your information. You know, the it's the, um, well, it is the floodgates and it is Pandora's box opening up because someone didn't want to stop. And it's all very interesting. <laughs> and so I think, um, yeah, I mean, Venus in Capricorn, we can look at it as a woman in power, possibly an older woman, Venus in Capricorn, but it does have to do with money and power you know, in government and responsibility, fiscal responsibility. Um, there could be stuff coming up about people in government and their own financial dealings, right? Insider trading, perhaps, and going through people's financial records. It's kind of a follow the money and follow the association so like if getting down to the root of the problem means looking at the person's finances and who they're associated with that kind of thing so definitely turning a very odd corner here and Um, we'll see what else comes up out of that. But I thought it would be interesting to talk about those asteroids today. Lachesis, Atropos, Clotho, Pandora, DNA. Who else did we talk about? Hmm. We didn't get to Eris and Dionysus. Mercury and Mars and then Venus is also squaring. They squared the nodes and then they're squaring Eris and Dionysus in Aries. So, I mean, things are obviously, it's sort of a planned chaos is what it looks like to me because Eris is chaos and discord and you know Dionysus does have to do with power but it also has to do with decadence and should we say um concerning specifically masculine figures and you know cult of personality and charm and allure and decadence sexuality that kind of thing and it is in Aries and it is conjunct Eris so yeah there's that I mean if you look at the Diddy situation and you look at the transits 
if his Mars is at 20, I think it is 28, 29 degrees of Capricorn, thereabouts. Um, and every time we've been having transits to that point, I did notice that, you know, more charges, more allegations, and rumors that he's, you know, losing his mind, he's losing his shit, losing his temper, you know, Mars would be his temper, and the investigation rumors, I would expect we would see something with him, and it is, you know, it squaring Eris in Aries, the nodes, chaos, Dionysus, you know, the Dionysian archetype, masculine. Um, the, the Dionysian cult was, it was basically, you know, worship of the, the male deity and the male member, like it's phallus worship. So, I mean, look at the Diddy situation and tell me that that's not phallus worship, right? So, I assume we'll be talking about those things. I wish that Cassie would do the interview that was talked about. I'm going to look at our asteroids for just a second here. Because I want to know... What happened to that interview? She was supposed to do an interview and then she's like, no, I'm not doing Oprah and whoever. And I was looking at the asteroids. Cass Cassandra and Radio Communicata. Those are two asteroids. Cassandra being, you know, the prophet test that was cursed to not be believed. And I'm looking at that because Cassandra is her name. So around the 21st, we would have had Radio Communicata and Apophis moving into Capricorn. And Venus then moving into Capricorn. Cassandra and Ixion. See, Cassandra, Ixion is cheating murder and murder and karma and taking advantage of those who have been your benefactor, possibly getting second chances. So I wonder... I, th I thought I heard she got paid again. Don't quote me on that. Um, I think that she, oh, you know what it is? At this point, once Cassandra went into Capricorn and Radio Communicata and then Venus, I think I think I heard that she was going to be part of of a documentary. Maybe I'm not sure, but maybe the one that Fifty Cent has been reportedly working on, and that would make sense now with Cassandra and Capricorn because Fifty Cent is a Cancer, and Capricorn is opposite Cancer. So. Perhaps she thought she stood to make more money by, and also could really own the narrative, really own the narrative by aligning with someone doing a documentary, possibly, if she trusts them, more so than doing an interview. So that's kind of interesting. Now that I think about it, yeah, so I'm um, just looking to see if there's anything else that I can 
point out that's going on. Ugh, let me move those asteroids. I hope everyone is doing well and keeping warm or keeping dry or keeping wet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> whatever is working for you. Um, the moon is in Libra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Libra, where are you? DNA. All right, so right now, today, the moon is around 16, 17. Libra conjuncts two asteroids, Siva, which is the same basically as Shiva, another iteration of Shiva. And... So we're talking about Shiva, Shakti, Kundalini, energy, masculine, feminine, balance, tapping into our Chi energy, maybe. Then tomorrow or overnight, let's see, I guess that would be overnight. The moon will conjunct Zeus, some nice masculine warrior energy, Jupiterian, Zeus, Jupiter, being on the same wavelength. We have Urania at 25 Libra, Urania being the muse of astrology. She's pretty prominent in my chart. Um, yeah, that's about it until the moon goes into Scorpio, which will square Pluto tomorrow the first. I always think it's interesting how the numerology, when we find it at the end of the month, how it jumps, right? So the 31st is a four day. And then we jump to February 1st, which is a two day. So we go from a four to a two. It's almost like we reach a certain plateau and level of stability and the building of our structure or the energy, you know, four being a number of stability. Back down to a two. So there's something that we have to reassess about the the self and the other on the first and the um, flow, the reciprocity, the idea of duality. It's not just self and other. It's not just personal internal versus external. Um, you know, it happens on many different levels. We could be given two options. Venus is at 11 degrees of Capricorn, which reduces to a two. That's interesting. I don't know. The moon does square Mercury, though, early in the day, tomorrow. So it's um, some kind of decision or understanding being reached. Some kind of mm, maybe a need for communication in order to balance the situation. Or a tipping point in our emotional state because we have a more mature outlook with Mercury and Capricorn or a more mature understanding, more practical, logical, that's Mercury and Capricorn, and then our 
moon in Libra is more subjective, more emotional, but it is, again, Libra is a air sign, so it is intellectual. It has to do with the thoughts and the communications. So it does seem that there will be a shifting point in the type of information we're getting or the way we communicate or, you know, we've been maybe waiting for communication, waiting for things to change. The moon does square Mars, so maybe there is some sort of action and initiation first that brings the communication or the intention set on a emotional level to say I want to pursue something that I desire hmm. and maybe it requires partnership maybe it requires communication but there is some sort of shift to okay um from today until tomorrow, we've reached a certain place and now we're being asked on the first to consider partnership, reciprocity, balancing the scales, putting in some sort of effort, making some sort of gesture, putting out communications. I mean, we're going into the last quarter square. So once, once the moon gets into Scorpio, we're totally operating on an intuitive level. And in the waning moon, we're releasing Okay, so releasing and disseminating, you know, on one level, um, ideas and communications and details, dark details with the moon in Scorpio. It's interesting because I have seen West Memphis 3 come up a lot lately. And so I'm asking myself astrologically, why would that be? And I did notice that I believe, let me see, I think Saturn was in Scorpio during that time wait no maybe not there was something that either those kids had in their chart or maybe the west memphis three had in their chart that was in scorpio and we're starting to have squares to those planets. It could have been Chiron. What year did that happen? I wish I had made notes or I will go into it. Um, mm, what my yeah, I'm having a brain fart about what year those murders actually happened. But I was listening to Sloane Bella and she did a channeling on it that I thought, fuck, you know. She did talk a little bit about their charts. And just listening to the astrology, I was like, oh, no, she's right about like the astrology backs up what she's saying about what she thinks happened or what was going on around them at the time. Um, yeah, I think they were born in the 80s and then this happened in the 90s. 
Anyway, I know we were dealing with a lot of Scorpio stuff. There were Scorpio transits. Yeah, they had Pluto and Scorpio. It was Pluto and Scorpio. Saturn. One of the kids had Mars. One of the perpetrators, I think, had Mars. I think Damien Eccles actually had Moon Mars in Scorpio. Whatever it was. Um, I should probably fucking be doing a video. Go I will. I know I should. I'm not going to say it anymore. I'm just going to fucking do it. Um, yeah. So why is this coming up now? Well, we do have Pluto squaring that Pluto in Scorpio. We have the sun squaring the Saturn or what's his names? Maybe it's his Mars and fuck. I don't know. I, I'm going to have to do those charts now because it's going to fucking bug me. Um, yeah. So it's going to keep coming back up and maybe it won't even get solved until like 10 years from now when Pluto gets to the middle of Aquarius. But Pluto is squaring that Pluto from 1984. Yeah, that's when they would have been born. The three older kids, yeah. Um, and... Oh, shoot. Let's see. Sorry, I have to go back and look at this stuff now. Pluto and Capricorn would have been so all right. Really, really. Saturn going through Scorpio again would bring the Saturn return to the perps the kids involved around 2012 Saturn entered Scorpio so they would have had Saturn Pluto conjunct Saturn transiting their Pluto what else Uranus was in Aries Um, Neptune had just entered Pisces and Chiron in Pisces. Still, I think that's when the trials might have been. But I noticed, my point is, I noticed with Saturn transiting to Scorpio, we got a lot of the information regarding the dark side of what goes on with sex and pedialyte that's when it all really started coming out was like 2012 2014 i remember hearing about um the epstein stuff way way back before it all really you know came out people were really talking about it because my ear was on the underground but okay my point is saturn going through scorpio brought up a lot of that stuff now saturn squaring the scorpio stuff when saturn was going through aquarius that would have brought it up again and Pluto going through Aquarius is going to bring it up even more. I don't feel like it's going away. I just think it's going to be. We're going to be talking about it more. Probably there will be. Lawsuits and moves towards. 
people being arrested, but it will be the tip of the iceberg because they always need a scapegoat. It's always, they got to throw some chum out for the sharks and to avoid, avoid it going higher up the chain, so to speak. So that's why I think what's happening right now with Pluto in Aquarius and Aquar and Uranus going direct. I mean, that literally is the commodification of people, of bodies, alive and dead. Oh, there was something I was looking at. Oh. It's just disgusting. <laughs> so disgusting. I don't know why I have to look at these things, but I do. Um, no, I'm not going to go into it. It has to do with flesh and an asteroid that I came across that I'm like, oh, you know, I only look at that one way. Let me look at it another way. And then I realized another meaning for it. And then I realized, ooh, yuck. So I've been watching that one. It's Toro. Toro, Toro. But I'm not going to go into it. Because it is a conjunct, a particular other interesting asteroid. Ew. And it's been coming up. I'm sorry. It's gross. But I cannot look away. And I cannot keep my mouth shut. It does have to do with meat. And what you think is animal meat. May not be animal meat. You catch my drift. And I've thought that for a fucking long time. When I used to walk through Harlem and smell that Popeye's chicken, I said, there's something wrong here. I don't know what I'm smelling, but I feel like I'm smelling something that is not animal meat. I remember thinking it then and thinking it and just knowing, obviously, that every depraved thing exists on this earth. Yuck. So, asteroid Toro. Toro is fatty tuna. You do the math. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> Hope I didn't ruin anybody's lunch or dinner. I'm pretty much wrapping it up here. I think I've talked enough shit for one day. I hope you all understand. And keep track of the dates that I pointed out to you. So, you know, together we can try to figure out, like, I mean, this is how we look at, like, the meaning of astrological transits and the asteroids, in my opinion, the observational aspect of it. I don't like to just look at an aspect and say, oh, okay, well, Robert Hand says in his wonderful book, this is how this will turn out. I don't like cookie cutter. I don't like canned laughter. It has to be organic for me. And so that's what I like doing. I mean, that's what I've been doing for many, many years. I'm just sharing it with you guys now. So one thing I like to do, it's one of my weird hobbies. Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. I just want to make sure that I talk about everything that I was seeing, Elon, Neuralink, DNA. Oh, oh, DNA square to Venus and Capricorn, companies, business, money, obvious, square DNA, um, 
DNA is square asteroid telephus. Telephus. Which to me, uh, as I look at it, relates to telepathy. Can be telephone, but um, I look at telephus. And what is Neuralink? I don't know. I mean, I haven't really studied up on it, but when I think about it, right, it just seems obvious that you're, it's a neurological link. Link to what? Well, yeah, AI. But if you're all linked up to the AI through the neural link, then aren't you all linked to one another? And aren't you telepathic? And technology does mimic what we're already capable of. So if I look at this another way, Venus represent the physical body in Capricorn leveling up, let's just say. Square to DNA, opposite to left telephus. Why can't that be DNA being... I hate the word activated. Insert eye roll here. Because it, I don't, just implies something outside of ourself activating DNA. Um, although it can, right? I mean, we have technology that can do things to DNA, and that is something activating our DNA. But I don't like looking at it in a spiritual sense, except maybe from an organic standpoint of this does happen, right? We can have latent genes that get switched on. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? I mean, it is possible. So why couldn't our genes contain the propensity towards telepathy and that's being switched on? Just saying, just food for thought. Just food for thought. And with Aquarius placements, I can tell you that that's true. I know telepathy is real. I know for sure that telepathy is real. I've talked to other people with Aquarius placements, and they have told me that they believe the same. I know somebody with my exact moon degree, and we are so fucking telepathic. It's fucking incredible like she's a psychic too she's a psych uh, like a, a, a psychic medium and when we discuss things like if she's telling me something about a situation I can see it I can see it and I'll describe it and she knows that I'm seeing it and vice versa so maybe it's because we have the same moon placement but to me, because Aquarius rules like brain waves and the electromagnetic spectrum, the wave spectrum, right? I know it's not called the wave spectrum, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so obviously telepathy, remote viewing, she's done it, I've done it. It's crazy. So now that we have Pluto and Aquarius, the sun's going through Aquarius. We're going to have Mercury enter Aquarius. We're going to have Mars enter Aquarius. Everyone's going to become somewhat psychic. Like they're, they're going to level up on their psychicness. Uranus being direct in Taurus, the sign of the physical body. So, it's interesting. I'm fascinated. I think it's sexy. <laughs> anyway, 
a lot of astral travel, you know, cool shit. Now that Pluto's in Aquarius, we're going to really be talking about the paranormal, aliens, abductions have come back. You know, it's funny, like last year, I think I said to my friend Dave, like, whatever happened to, to abductions? No talks about abductions anymore. Well, it's coming up. I mean, it has come up. It's been being talked about more and more. And, you know, other Aquarian themes, near-death experiences, psychedelics, fabuloso very interesting it's going to be an interesting year i'm really looking forward to it honestly i think it's going to be a lot of fun i am really looking forward to it you know once the planets get out of capricorn then things, you know, it's not so dense. It's not so heavy. It's more mental, intellectual, more stimulating, more novelty. You know, I tweeted the other day about Cliff High and his hyper novelty. Another thing he's been talking about for a while, and he's been saying that he doesn't know when these things were going to happen, but he could guesstimate and project. But I, immediately I started looking at the astrology aspects and this, this is the first phase. I mean, we've seen a little bit of it. We've seen glimpses of the weirdness, but I'm telling you now that Uranus is direct Pluto is in Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus. Once we get past the 16th, when Venus conjuncts to Pluto, then, then the energy really shifts. I think it'll be a little easier for the Earth signs. I think it'll be kind of exciting for the air signs. I think it will be pretty exciting, maybe maybe a little challenging for water and fires. Pretty, I mean, things are going to move fast. That's the other thing about Uranus and Aquarius energy. Capricorn moves very slow because it wants to get it right. You know, um, air energy moves more swiftly. Aquarius, you know, Uranus is, you know, sudden changes, unexpected shocks, weird, me likey. Anyway, I think that's about it, I guess. I think. I think, I think. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to say about that. Maybe I want to look at what asteroids are in. Uh, sorry. Ugh. What do we have coming over the next few days with the moon going through Libra and Scorpio? What asteroids will we be playing with? Let's see. So we talked about DNA. We talked about Zeus. We talked about... Ooh. Urania. All right. So in Scorpio, we have at two degrees retrograde Scorpio, Haumea. That's a Hawaiian goddess, I think, of childbirth. So we're talking, you know, 
females, mothers, birthing. Apollon, which is another iteration of Apollo, six degrees of Scorpio. Elatus, six degrees of Scorpio. That's a centaur, I believe. Elatus, Elatus. So I don't, I don't really, not that well versed in that, in the meaning or what, but what do I think of? I think of elated, elevated. We'll see what, you know, if there's anything you know, notice, Ap Apollon. So if that's Apollo type energy, Jupiterian, elatus, elevated, they kind of work together. Radamanthus, seven degrees of Scorpio. That's an underworld judge, a judge of the dead. I've noticed this to indicate, I've seen it play out where it is some kind of a justice beyond the human, beyond the physical, otherworldly ju other justice. Um, energies and influences beyond the physical that are at play when it comes to judging situation, justice, judges. I saw the judges being judged. There was an eclipse on Radamanthus back in the fall. And I think that's where we really started to get the exposure of judges and people in the justice system, lawyers and whatnot. Um, and the justice system itself, the corruption being exposed. So Scorpio, it's corruption, it's bribery, it's uh, sexual liaisons, taboo behavior. Uh, I said bribery, right? Anyway, all those Scorpio things and Ranamanthus was exposing secrets, hidden things. All right, so eight Scorpio, we have Hebe, H-E-B-E. -E. Hebe is a younger person, um, mythology. She's, it's like a helper energy or a young partner. And Hebophilia is a thing. A lot of what we call Pediolites are really hebeolites. Hebe can also be um, a derogatory term for uh, if I'm allowed to say the word juicies. <laughs> ah, okay. So, but Hebe in mythology was like a young girl a helper person but in Scorpio at eight degrees that can make you wonder a bit maybe hmm. it is opposite Jupiter all right never mind Zulong is at 12 degrees of Scorpio. Zulong is the fire dragon. You know, we're in the year of the dragon. It's not here yet. It's not Chinese New Year yet, but I think we're in a wood dragon. And Zulong is a fire dragon in Scorpio. Interesting. Uh, Hybris, asteroid Hybris at 15 Scorpio. Hybris is hubris. Narcissus is also at 15 degrees of Scorpio. Some narcissistic energies coming out. The sun will oppose Narcissus. So the sun will be casting some light. I'm sorry, not oppose, square Narcissus. So it will finally be looking at the psychological underpinnings and operations and exposing some narcissistic behavior within the collective. 
and rooting it out. I mean, I think we're moving away from sort of the uh, hero worship and sort of um, internet celebrity, social media celebrity type elevating cult of personality and moving more towards an organic um more of an organic movement of what we consider to be quote celebrity or people that are I think there are going to be people more who are just doing it differently who are standing out from the crowd not trying to be like everybody else and I think that'll be helpful if we could root out some of that narcissism there. But we get to see it, you know, from time to time. We get the lucky, the sheer luck of it. Okay, Scorpio, over the next few days, let's say we're talking about from now until the third into the fourth. The moon will be in Scorpio contacting these asteroids. So think about if these if these themes are coming up. All right. 16 Scorpio, or if you have placements at these degrees. Um, 16 Scorpio. Now I'm never gonna be able to pronounce this, but it sound, looks like it might be Baba Mwana. Waresa. Mbaba Mwana Waresa. I think it's an African deity, maybe. Um, and I what sticks out to me is that it's associated with beer. Like this was a ancient deity that created beer. God gave us beer because he wants us to be happy. In this case, it's a she. Pretty sure it's a feminine deity. Deity. Okay. Poseidon is at 16 degrees of Scorpio. Poseidon is Neptune. Same guy. Ruler of the sea. King of the sea. Sappho is at 25 degrees of Scorpio. Sappho, sapphic poetry. Sappho is a poet. Lived on the Isle of Lesbos associated with lesbianism and libertine values, sexual self-expression, I would say, um, and cheating sometimes. Typhon, 26 degrees of Scorpio. Sisyphus, also 26 Scorpio. Deswana. So Typhon is a serpent figure deity typhon but sometimes associated with storms like a typhoon sisyphus is rolling up the the boulder or up the, the the hill only to have it roll down again futile effort um Dez Dezwana is a female deity a sort of earthy forest goddess wild woman energy Deucalion 27 Scorpio Deucalion is a Noah figure like Noah Noah's Ark the flood escaping the flood so Deucalion can indicate you know escaping unscathed like at the last minute sort of spared from destruction. Pallas Athena is a 28 Scorpio. Ceto, the sea monster, C E T O, is 29 Scorpio. And that's it for Scorpio. So until February 4th, when the sun goes into Sag, that's what we have going on with the lunar cycle. And some of the psychological dynamics 
and things coming up from, you know, like shadow stuff that we can deal with. Um, so, I mean, it really won't apply unless you have placements there and or, well, most intensely if you have placements in Scorpio or you're close to someone who does. So maybe your placements in Leo, Aquarius, Taurus might be opposing or squaring their placements. So that's what you can probably look for. Just be observant. It's not a big deal, I think. Okay, I think that I'm done, finally. How long have I been on there? Is this like an hour and a half now? <laughs> it's not too bad, right? Considering some of my shows have been two and a half hours and that was tedious as fuck. Not that I don't love doing it. I just think there's very few people who are going to sit there and listen for two and a half hours. I get it. It's fine. Anyway, um, it was probably, you know, partially my fault. Repeating myself too much. I really, I'm like looking at it now. I know I missed something. <clears throat> There's always more to say. Oh, well, one thing I do see now that I missed. Oh, well, the moon in Libra yesterday opposed squared to Venus. Yes. And I talked about that, but it was opposite Celestia. And I haven't really talked about Celestia. Celestia is at eight degrees of Aries. It doesn't move that fast. So it's been in Aries for quite some time. Lucky you, Aries. You've had a lot of salaciousness around you. Right now you have karma, eros, phaethon, terpeshore, heracles, salacia, or salacia, salacia, in Aries. That's, oh, and amor, sorry, amor, okairo, manwe, ending up with Celestia at eight degrees and she moves very slow. So she's been there for a long time. It's been maybe three years since she's even moved five degrees or so. But um, so the first decan Aries from zero to 10 degrees. If you have planets there, Amor just moved into a, a Aries Okairo, I oh, haven't really gotten too deep into that, but that's a that's a centaur. Manwe is Tolkien. I think he's the elf king. Karma is in your sign. Eros is in your sign. Phaethon, that's the fiery chariot crashing to earth can be associated with car crashes, things just, you know, crash and burn. Phaethon is sort of like an Icarus story. It's abuse of power. It's unbridled power. But in Aries, it's speed, aggression, violence, maybe. Watch out for car crashes if you have planets at like four to five degrees of Aries and or you know squaring that point or opposing it maybe um again depends on the chart don't get excited and what else do you have? Yeah. Terpeshore, that's a muse of dance. Heracles, Hercules, same thing. Heracles, like, I think of like tightrope walking and Her Herculean efforts, the labors of Hercules. So it's kind of like a test, test of strength and character. Celestia, 
Salacia, I have definitely seen this asteroid operating when there is salacious gossip. So salacious gossip about a woman is Venus in Capricorn square to Salacia. And what did we have? Opposite DNA, square to DNA in Libra. And we had the gossip about Omar marrying her brother. Right? So, salacious. Okay, I'm done. That's it. I have milked it for all it's worth. I have squeezed all the juice out of these lemons that I can possibly squeeze. So, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me again. Thank you for supporting me. If you enjoy my work, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, the Rumble. And if you're on the socials, you can come and find me. I'm on the Twitter X. I'm on, oh, I just joined Threads. How exciting. Like, I need another social network. But, um, yeah, I'm building a new tribe of bitches on, on Threads. It's pretty cool. And I'm on Instagram, too. I have a Facebook page. And maybe you want to show it some love. You know what? I think Facebook is dead this year. That's what I think. I think Facebook is dead. Maybe some of those transits to Pluto and Aquarius from Mercury and Mars and Venus could be the death knell of, of Facebook. I think Facebook is dead and that's why they're starting threads because I think they're all owned by... I think I got to threads through... Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. And let's face it, Facebook's a dud. But Twitter is definitely at the top of the pyramid for me because, I mean, it acts as a search engine. It's not just what's on the published on the internet. It's what people are saying about things. People who are there, like, in real time, experiencing like you know an event happens somewhere you can get somebody saying i live there and this is what i've seen might be true might not be true but it is a bigger picture anywho that's why i've been putting more of my lives well i'm not living it today i will stream this video after the fact uh on to Twitter because where people are, I'm probably looking at reaching a bigger audience, you know, looking for participation, engagement. I don't know. It's just the place to be. And so that's where I am. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you look in the description box, I always have links to where you can find me. I have a Gilded Chat channel. You can join that also. There's a link for the invite. Uh, if you're looking to book a reading, I am very accessible. You can either email me. If you don't already like follow me on social media, if you do, you can DM me. It's fine. Um, except on on Signal, please don't do that because I don't take anybody that I don't know. And I've had people approach me, and it's usually scammy, so I don't answer. So if you're really looking to connect with me and find out what we can do for you, please a DM. If you follow me or an email, astrolunachick at gmail.com, or you can try the Astro Lunatic hotline, and that is 914 222 1231. Call and leave a message, or I might pick up the phone. You never know. You could be like, What are you wearing? <laughs> and then I'll be like, All right. 
fuck off. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, so like you can call and leave a message. You can text me. It's a regular phone number and let me know like what you're looking for. We'll have a little chat and we'll hook it up. And that's how easy it is. I, I know people like things like clearly defined for them. And I don't have a website. I don't have a price list. People like to do that. Like, I don't know. I just don't have that. I really would rather have a discussion with someone and say, what are you looking for? And get a feel for them for what, what it is they need. So we know how much time to book. I don't want to, you know, give someone a reading that, and I don't answer their questions. I want to know what's going on. Why are they looking for a reading? What do they want me to look at? I like looking at very obscure things. <laughs> I do, I, we could do, you know, a one question reading, a, a timing thing, whatever it is. You know, the possibilities are endless. I don't like charging people for something they don't need. I don't want to do a birth chart reading when they're really in a crisis situation and they need to know what's coming up in the next 24 and they want to know how to handle it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, and I'm a personable person. I like people. So because I like people, you know, I like to connect with people. I like to do readings, but you know, I would say like 90% of the people that I read for become friends. You know, they they become part of my network and my tribe, so to speak. And so um you know, that's pretty cool, I think. And I don't know, that's just the way I read. I come at it from psychology and counseling and what I learned going through those that course of study and um, connecting with people and creating a rapport is, I think, very key to healing. And I don't know. I've had a lot of, re not a lot of readings, but I've had readings where I don't feel like my needs were met. I don't feel like my questions were answered. And um, a lot of that had to do with like, it, really that person having no connection to me whatsoever. And I w did not have an opportunity to offer feedback. So how could that person know what I needed? How could they really know, like, where I'm at? Uh, anyway, so I like to do a reading where the client is participating. So there you go. That's how you can reach me. Thank you, everybody. Those of you who stuck around to the end, the bitter end. God love you. All right, so that's about it. You know where to find me now. And I'm going to wrap this up. Where the hell is the... <laughs> Where's the stop button? All right, you guys. Ciao for now.